Janine Antoni was born on January 19, 1964. She is a Bahamian-born American artist who creates contemporary work in performance art, sculpture, and photography. Antoni's works focus mostly on the process and the transitions between the making and finished product. She attended Rhode Island College of Art and Design for her BA and Sarah Lawrence College for her MFA. She won many awards, such as the MacArthur Fellowship. Unveiling is a bronze bell sculpted into the form of a veiled figure. The artist sculpted a veil of clay over her head and then cast the veil in bronze. The bell's clapper is made of lead. As the bell rings, the clapper is reformed by the inside of the bronze veil. The veil hides Antoni's image, yet transformed into a bell. Antoni melted down half of a bulldozer bucket and used the metal to create eight scoops, each diminishing in size. She ends with a loop spoon designed for the baby to begin feeding itself. Each scoop and cradle has two rolls, that one of scooping and being scooped. Finally, the empty loop spoon exposes the tension between the need for separation and the need to be held. Antoni made a replica of the backpack she used every day. To render the backpack while maintaining its attachment to the hide was a way for Antoni to contemplate her relationship with the cow. Around the back of the hide, the viewer can see the straps of the backpack at shoulder height, allowing them to imagine wearing the fate of the cow on one's back. Saddle is a full roll cow hide draped over a mold of Antoni's body. When the material hardened, the mold was removed. When confronted with the object, one feels the absence of both the artist and the cow. This piece is modeled after a traditional porcelain prayer nightlight. The title is taken from a prayer Antoni said with her mother throughout her childhood. In the sculpture, the mother's hand meets the daughter's hand in prayer. Antoni uses a pair of childbearing pelvic bones to make an architectural molding. This piece reinforces a relationship between the body and its dwelling. Antoni leaves a pair of childbearing pelvic bones frozen in the plaster as evidence of this visceral gesture, reminding us that the womb is our first form of architecture. This piece takes the form of a love letter addressed to an exhibit visitor. Scribbled on a page ripped from the guide, it is written from the perspective of artwork as if it had watched the visitor walk around the exhibit. The letter is then smuggled into the visitor's belongings while in the coat check. Sitting on top of a stool is the embrace between the curve of a sacrum and the coupled hand. The introverted sacrum meets the upturned palm. The tip of the coccyx sinks into the seat of the stool. The body and stool grasp onto one another, taking their relationship to an extreme. The stool has been designed for the body, but over time, the stool has designed the body. This piece shows crossing one leg over another, an act of modesty and grace. In this work, the interior bone of the right leg has been embedded into the flesh of the left leg. The successful fusion makes it impossible to unlearn this act. The crossed legs hover over their absent chair. Antoni expresses when the baby's head is of the world, yet its body is still of the mother. Although we become separate bodies, we continue to negotiate these two spheres, that of the mother and that of the world. During childbirth, the soft membrane of the newborn's head allows the give and take between the bones of the baby's skull and the pelvic bones of the mother. In this sculpture, Antoni's bust is hollowed into a vessel and fuses to a flower pot, creating a passageway between the flower pot's hole and the soft membrane. The two vessels join to become an hourglass. Like an umbilical cord, this passageway connects one vessel to another. Throwing back her head and sipping from the bowl of her own breast, Antoni remakes a memory with an impossible gesture. Antoni turns her breast as she transforms her flesh into the surface of a cup. A domestic pitcher forms the body and bulges out to replace the absent breast. The circuit is complete as the milk of the breast is swallowed back into the pitcher. Looking up at the breast, we recall how the child gazes up at the mother, breast, pitcher, and cupboard, all vessels of nourishment. The head melts through the ribs, listening for the absent heart. The desire to hear is so strong that the side of the face sinks through the cage and the ear re-emerges inside the chest. Pressing down and half immersed, the ribs fuse to their pillow, locating this gesture as an intimate space. The pillow flops over the pedestal. In the stacking, the head melts down while the pedestal pushes up and the pillow presses on either side. As the bodies overlap, the two rib cages slide into one another so deeply that the sternum and spine nearly touch. Two separate cavities join to form another, creating the bowl of the basket. The center of the basket opens into the space of the absent hearts. The reed of the handle replaces the spinal cord and twists together to complete the form. Two human spines are intertwined, independently winding away from each other. The spines release back into a tighter union. They travel apart to come together, propelled forward by the rhythmic movement. Head and tail are introverted and the sacrums meet, cupped in an arch. 
What first appears to be the artist's own hand up against her throat reveals itself to be a younger hand. The daughter's touch leaves a trace of gold on her mother's neck. As the mother looks to the heavens, she leaves her neck vulnerable, exposing the passageway where breath comes a voice. The daughter's hand adorns the neck, reminding her mother through touch to speak her truth. Bringing the center to the outside, the vertebrae of the neck and the bones of the fingers are impressed, dragged, and cast.